So let's implement depth first search in NetLogo. So you can see how that whole thing works and we'll show you a few little tricks. So first I have something already here set up. And when I click set up, it generates a graph and then lays it out. When I hit layout, I have the number of nodes and the number of edges. And so I just want to show you that code here. This is all there is to it. Uh, I define some breed, which is the nodes, right? And a global variable called colors. So on setup, I just you know, clear everything, set the patches to white because I like the white background better. And I define colors are uh, the variable colors holds all the possible colors that the nodes can be. So I said red, blue, and green. And uh, then I create the nodes, their circles, randomly placed and randomly colored. And here is where I generate the edges. So I have num edges and each one is randomly, it is basically a random graph. I pick one node and another node, both of them randomly. And I put a link between them. So now notice that this could re result in disconnected graphs sometimes, like right there, uh -huh. got lucky. Um, so, and uh, I'm just gonna ignore those. So if that happens, we'll just generate a new one. Okay. And then the layout is, uh, you know, it's, there's a built-in that logo has uh, several layout options built in. This is one, the spring one, uh, which I like. Uh, so I'm gonna use that. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna implement the depth first search to find the color for this graph, given that it can only be three colors, you know, such that uh, it's um, you know, not two adjacent nodes have the same color. Here, red is red, and, you know, so this wouldn't be a valid coloring. So, okay, what we're gonna need, um, yeah, one of the things we're gonna need to do is uh, so have a no color color. Uh, so instead of doing this, I'm just gonna change the color to black, right? So I'm gonna say black is the no color color. That means we haven't colored it yet. Um, good, so that's done. And uh, then we're gonna need, uh, so basically we're gonna implement depth for search. And I will look at our code here, you know, depth for search takes as argument i, which is the, the current node we're working with, and then g, which is the current the graph so far. So I'm gonna change this around here. Instead of passing g around, because g is you know the world itself, I don't wanna keep passing all that around. Um, plus it's, there's no reason to. So we're not gonna do that, I'm gonna change this a bit. Uh, but I still have to pass i, which is the current node. So how do I do that, I don't know. To depth, this is depth first search. So this is typical, you know, the DFS is gonna be our helper function and depth first search is gonna actually call uh, DFS with turtle zero, right? So this is another thing you need to know about NetLogo, um, you know, because the way we created the turtles, created the nodes here, that was the first thing we did. Uh, they're gonna get the num their who number uh, is gonna start at zero and then go up to you know whatever num nodes minus one of course um, and uh, so that's the thing that's gonna help us right because we know that the nodes are numbered zero through num nodes minus one and that's how that's the ordering we're gonna use you know instead of the i as we have here you know i goes i plus one so we're gonna that's our i. Uh, and then uh, this this other command when you say turtle zero that's gonna that's actually node zero which is turtle zero uh, and we can increment that so so DFS is gonna take as an argument the uh, a node n um, put that in brackets n and then I'm gonna let i be the who of n so the i is gonna be the index of that and uh, so that first search you'll notice that it um like in this case it's gonna return g or either it returns the graph as it's colored or null meaning we can find um, a value a coloring so we're gonna we need to do something like that um actually so do we need to report so it's gonna be a report and um dfs this is gonna return true 
if uh, the car the current coloring works and or false if there is no coloring right um, and so we're going to change this to say if there is a coloring the current coloring works um, and um, see you know see the colors <laughs> uh, otherwise uh, well, there should be an if else otherwise we're gonna say sorry sorry no coloring is possible so at that point we know no coloring is possible because the FS Turtle zero is going to go all the way to the end. Okay, so basic algorithm is, uh, as you see, it goes for all the variables in the domain, which in this case is for each, for each in color. So colors, colors is our domain. Now we're going to use, again, assuming that all variables, all nodes have the same domain in this case, it's, it's easy to change that, but uh, you can do that if you want. So for each of the colors, uh, what do I need to do? Uh, I'm going to set this variable to that color, and then I'm going to check, yeah, are there any constraints violated? So I'm going to ask uh, N to set his color to the current color. Remember, the question mark is going to be set to the current color as per the for each here. So I'm going to set this guy, and then and I'm going to say if if there are any constraint uh, violations, if there are any constraint violations, um, then what? Uh, if there are some constraint violations, well, let's say if there are no constraint violations, if there are no constraint violations, uh, then that's good. That's good. We can recursively call ourselves with an I plus one. Uh, then uh, we're going to recursively DFS instead of being this guy at turtle n it's going to be uh, turtle uh, i plus one um, so that there just make it more clear that's not really quite right right um, so if this doesn't violate any constraint then uh, we're going to recursively call ourselves with the new settings and um, see if that works. Uh, first, if there's this other diff, if that works, then we're done. Otherwise, we're not done. Uh, so, if if that worked, you know that returns true, uh, then that's gonna mean, oops. Okay. So if there are no constraint violations with that, then we cursively call ourselves. And if so, that means if this returns true, that means that the rest of the graph is also cool. Found that coloring, so we're done. We can report true. At that point, we have a coloring. Right. Um, now, okay. One thing to note here is though, like this could be a problem. Like, what if we have an i plus one here? what if we're at the end you know what if this guy is the last turtle the last node so the uh, turtle i plus one actually doesn't exist um so i have that's another case when i want to return true um so I should put that in here i think i messed up the indentation there if so how do i say that so if i want to say that if i is the last one so oh, max who of nodes so this max who of nodes is going to return the maximum who number so if that is i not one i if that is i then that means that you know i am the last one so i shouldn't be doing this other step here so i should basically just report true so uh let me put the correct one so we this means that we have reached 
the leaf node, right? So we're now, at this point, we are at the bottom of that tree I showed you. At this point, we're not, still not, so we recursively call ourselves, but if that works, uh, then it reports true. Now we're good. Uh, and then we're gonna set each other colors. And uh, so, notice that if we get after the for each colors, if we get to here, it means we tried all the colors and it didn't work. So we have to report false. We gotta return false because that means if we ever get here, it means we tried all the colors. Uh, and then this is this part return null. So one other thing we have to do because we're not passing G is uh, I have to ask N to set color black. So it goes back to black because you know we set N to the various colors here. Check that. Uh, yeah, nothing named constraint violations. So I have to in, implement that reporter to report constraint violations so and so this is going to return true return true if there are any constraint violations in the current graph okay how do I check for constraint violations well I have uh, basically, you know, it's just going to mean, you know, are there any two guys that are connected by a link that have the same color? Also, another tricky thing is, you know, black, right? So black is the no color color. So it's okay if they're two blacks or if you're red and he's black, that's okay. It's only a problem if they're both red or both green or both blue, right? Because black, we said, you know, you're not done yet. So like in the first, say we first this set this one to red, this guy's black and that's okay. Uh, okay, so the code so report true. So, uh, yeah, so what we're gonna use is the links, right? So, because each constraint is a link, that is the kind of thing we want to use. So, what we're gonna say is um, we're gonna find all the violated links, like let violated links those are the ones whose constraints have been violated to be those are the ones uh so those are the links with and uh with what well uh, now the links if you look at the documentation the links on the link variables um variables here built in variables the links have variable the n1 and n2 variable which hold you know the guy that's connected at either end of the link, in this case, the nodes. So we can use those. So with, you know, if end, if, well, color of end one, that's gonna give us the color of one end. If color of end one uh, is, is equal to the color of end two, that's a violation, end two. Um, but not exactly, right? Because they could both be black. So we also have to say uh, if color, of end one is not equal to black and color of end two is not equal to black. So I think I got that right. Color of end one is not equal to black and color of end two is not equal to black. So neither one of them is black and their colors are the same. Because it's okay if one of them is red and black that's going to be always fine. So, so that's the violated. So that's going to give me the set of those all the violated links. So we just have to report uh, if there are any violated links. So if there are any violated links, it's going to be true. So that's what we want. Okay. Um, so let's see if this works. Set it up, lay it out, and that uh, one. I need a button. So let's add a button. Um, the first search button. 
So that's my call. I got first search and uh, boom, see the colors. So we found a coloring. Uh, let's test it out again. Depth first search. Searching, 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 searching. Oh, found a solution. And I think it, you know, looks right, right? Hopefully. Let's do another one. Now, you see, that's not going to work because uh, uh, it's disconnected and we haven't, you know, you could change the code to handle that, but I'm not going to do that right now. Aha, uh, uh -huh. no coloring is possible because I can't really verify that that's true. It's too many nodes. So what you want to do is you know, to double check that you should really test it with uh, a small number of nodes and edges, you know, because at that point it's easier for us humans to actually find problems um, with, uh, with the graph. But uh, I think this works. I think this does work. So you see, pretty straightforward. You know, we're not passing the graph around. We're using the real world in part of our depth first search to do that. Um, so, um, and that's something that helps us. Notice also that, you know, we're sort of not using NetLogo, right? We're just doing this ask here and this other ask here. We're doing this very centralized. We cannot do, you notice that this, when I run this, it, uh, it just runs in one step. Uh, there is no way that I can uh, do the takes here. There's no easy way because I'm doing recursion. Um, so this will you know, uh, just, if you increase the number of nodes, of a big graph lay it out and disconnect it uh, run it it'll run um, there's no way to stop it you know so it's just gonna actually run its course I want to see if I can get it to run a long time so, oh I think that's not gonna the disconnected graph gonna be disconnected I get too many maximize the number of edges there we go run it mm. so um, but I can't get it. I need more edges if you had a, if you added a lot of edges it would take a long time to run um, because this is not necessarily a very smart algorithm but you can see there that this one looks like it's going to take a while, so it's probably impossible. It's what's happening, so but it still has to check all possible combinations, and uh, I think that is going to be a long time. And so it's the difference between if there's a solution, we can find it quickly. If there isn't one, it's going to take a long time. And you see, you know, this is fixed here. Uh, I can't because of the way that logo works. I can't just unclick that. Uh, I have to go to tools and then halt uh, to actually stop this, which is probably going to take forever. So that's uh, you know one of the issues with this kind of code that runs. It's just one function that runs all the time. In that logo, you you wouldn't want this. You would want to have uh, run each time the user hits go uh, or depth for search in this case you want it to run one step at a time that's really hard to do in this case because depth for search is a very centralized algorithm and it's recursive and we have to do it this way to change it would be rather hard uh, but anyway at least you can see how it's done